Good evening to everyone. Hello, hello. So my name is Ram, assistant professor from Department of Civil Engineering from Sri Chaitanya College of Engineering. Okay. So I welcome one and all for the lecture series on the, on the role of cement and supplementary cement ATS material in production of environment friendly concrete way. So forward towards sustainability. Okay. So the theme of uh, this lecture series is to bring key knowledge on production of environment friendly concrete. So which is a way, which is a way forward towards sustainability. Okay. So this lecture series will give so plenty of uh, knowledge for students to come up with environment friendly concrete in the future. So we hope this one week lecture series would help students to expand their mental horizon. Okay. So now I, it is my immense pleasure to welcome our honorable principal, Dr. Jivankateshwar Lagaru and today's chief guest. So group manager, NCCB, NCCBM. Okay. So national council for cement and buildings. So Bhuvaneshwar, Deepan Kumar Garu and beloved HOD. Dr. Sri Ram Chengaru. So now I will give so brief introduction about uh, my college. That is Sri Chaitanya College of Engineering was established in 2000, the year of 2004 under Tatsushila Educational Society. So the college is approved All Indian Council for Technical Education and it is affiliated to Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Hyderabad. So Sri Chaitanya College of Engineering is functioning, yes. So just all of you just mute yourself. From this minute. Okay, right. So Sri Chaitanya College of Engineering is functioning with the motto of property to technology and it is continuous, continuously taking genuine and immense efforts to produce technically competent um, so young engineers. The Department of Civil Engineering in SKI has been so producing high quality technical education so by industry and R&D organizations and academic institutions since uh, 2009. So now I request our below HOD, Dr. Sri Ramachandra. So please deliver a few words about the uh, lecture series. Thank you, Raju. Good evening, one and all. Good evening, sir. Can I audible to everyone? Ah, yes, sir. Audible. Yes. Uh, thank you, Raju, uh, for uh, giving a brief introduction about the lecture series. I welcome you all to the lecture series, yeah. role of supplementary uh, cementitious materials in production of environmental friendly concrete, a way forward for sustainability. We know cement is a major source for the construction industry. A lot of research has been done on it. and. Uh, being a researcher, we are also doing in that area. So whatever the work we are doing, we would like to share to our young generation kids. So you are the next generation who are going to take care of this. So it's a prime uh, motto is whatever the knowledge that we know that is to be shared to these second year, third year and fourth year BTEC as well as postgraduate students. Uh, taking this motto, we started this lecture series. First of all, uh, let me thank today's chief guest, Pawan sir, uh, group manager NCCBM Bhuvaneshwar for uh, accepting our request and coming forward to deliver a speech to our students. And sir is also giving a lecture uh, in this lecture series, sir is also giving uh, one topic. So the lecture series is of eight days from today to uh, 31st May 2021. It is covering various topics 
And these lecture series are being delivered by the researchers from NIT Warangal and Vignan University, Guntur. I thank our speakers who has come forward and take their valuable time for delivering this lecture. And here I request all the audience, participants, students to please listen these lectures carefully. And at the end of each session, we have a small quiz. What are the topic that is being taught by the speaker? Just to give you a motivation, we have conducted, we are conducting a small quiz. I request all the participants uh, to attend the, to attempt this online quiz and those who are performing well, we want to give a merit certificate as well as encouragement. Yeah, that encouragement might be a smaller one, but however, we would like to appreciate our students' efforts. The first lecture will be on hydration of cement. However, I will talk on that. So before that, uh, let us listen to our chief guest words. So uh, this lecture series will be a great success with the help of our all faculty members, with the help of uh, speakers, as well as with the help of student fraternity. Thank you one and all for giving me this opportunity. Raju, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. So now I request Honorable Principal Sir, Sri Chaitanya College of Engineering, so, Dr. J. Venkatesh Walgaru, so please deliver a few words about the lecture series. Raju, uh, maybe mm -hmm. the sir will join in the meantime. We can ask okay, the okay. uh, to speak a few words. Oh, okay, okay, sir. So, now I request our today's our chief guest, so D. Pawan Kumar Garu, so group manager in CCV BM, so Bhuvaneshwar, so, deliver a few words about the lecture series. Hello, sir. Very good evening, one and all. Uh, good evening, sir. So I thank the institution and its uh, uh, management for inviting me as a chief guest and honoring me. I, though I am not uh, to that uh, level, but uh, I, I thank the institution for uh, the invitation. So, as we know, the cement is one of the most uh, used binding material and uh, nowadays uh, our cement consumption is touching around 500 to 550 million tons per annum and uh, uh, our India is the second largest country after China uh, in the manufacture of this cement and uh, earlier we used to get uh, only ordinary Portland cement, that is the OPC. But nowadays, you may be seeing in the market a lot of blended cements. That is the cements used with, means manufactured with the help of supplementary cementitious material. That is the topic of this uh, our lecture series. So this supplementary cementitious materials are nothing but the materials as an industrial waste material. That is a industrial waste material fly ash from thermal power plant. And this industrial waste pro material like uh, steel, GGBS steel slag, that is ground granulated glass for the slag from steel plants, etc., are being incorporated and intergrinded or intermixed to form this uh, blended cements. And with the use of this blended cement, the global warming, uh, well, this uh, problem can be mitigated. Means the uh, we may be means you may be knowing that uh, to produce one ton of cement, almost uh, nearly 0.8 tons of uh, carbon dioxide is liberated into the atmosphere. So if you encourage the use of this blended cements in our construction, the clinkering factor can be reduced to somewhere around 50 percent, and we can effectively use our industrial byproducts to uh, form this cementitious material. Though we need to understand the, its chemical properties, its physical properties also. That's why I um, means I heartily uh, congratulate our uh, HOD sir and uh, team of uh, Sri Chaitanya who are behind this uh, lecture series, form, means framing this lecture series. 
because this is the order of the day and for the past 20 means two decades 20 years or so we are talking about the blended cements and lot of examples are there live examples are there in our projects where these blended cements are consumed hugely like Burj Khalifa and other uh, in our metro work also uh, they have used and lot of other uh, products, this other uh, national highway projects, etc. These blended cements are effectively used. And uh, yeah, as the lecture series, now I will talk about the lecture series, uh, the framing of this lecture series. The lecture series planned by the institution under the active leadership of uh, principal sir, chairman sir, and our uh, HOD and his team is a good opportunity to all our. Uh, engineers like that's what is told in the beginning it is a good opportunity to the young engineers to learn things regarding the cement concrete technology cement and concrete technology because we need to understand a lot even though a lot of research has been done in this cement and concrete technology there is still a lot of ample uh, areas are left and day by day new challenges are arriving so the experts chosen by the, uh, the team means whoever presenting the lectures in this series will share their uh, knowledge and uh, whatever they have gained so far in this their research arena so it will also to throw some challenges to the uh, community that is the student community so that they can think about their future projects like the, the final year students or third year students they have to give some seminars the project works and even the mtech students they have to go, means they have to produce they have to research and give, present their thesis accordingly so this you can get some ideas from this lecture uh, series so i request to each and every student participating in this uh, lecture series to be attend and to uh, learn few important things from this and you can uh, actively participate after the end of the series and as uh, HODs are told there will be a quiz it is a welcome move that to, so that the students can uh, be evaluated whatever they have learned and uh, they can means it is knowledge is an upgradation day by day you need to upgrade your knowledge then only you will stand in the competition so I, uh, I thank once again the management and the team of Sri Chaitanya and particularly civil engineering department for providing me this opportunity to speak few words to this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for giving valuable words about motivational speech. Thank you, sir. So now I hand over the session to my colleague and coordinator, Abhinay, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Raju sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and uh, good evening, good evening, one and all. Uh, once again, a warm welcome to lecture series on a role of uh, cement and supplementary cement materials in production of uh, environment friendly concrete. So, which is a way forward towards uh, uh, sustainability. So, as a part of the lecture series, we are going to conduct uh, eight lectures. That is eight days lectures. So, as today, uh, day one lecture. Uh, let me introduce a day one lecture speaker. So our day one lecture speaker is uh, Dr. M. Sri Ramachan. Dr. Uh, let me brief his profile about Dr. M. Sri Ramachan. So Dr. M. Sri Ramachan has received his uh, B.Tech from uh, Acharya Nagarjuna University and uh, done his M.Tech and Ph.D. from Department of Civil Engineering in NIT Varangal, National Institute of Technology Varangal. Dr. Sri Ramachan did his doctoral doctoral research in an area of uh, performance and microstructure characteristics of self curing and the self self curing and the self compacting concrete he did is a he did is a phd on self curing and a self compacting concrete self compacting concrete which basically concentrates on efficiency of self curing agents and self compacting concrete so the performance will include in this his in his research like uh, strength durability test microstructural studies and sem xrd and etc that's were connected so he published uh, 80 research papers in various international and national journals and in which 35 papers was published in sci journal so he is uh, 
review of constructions and building materials of SEA general. His research area includes self-form packing concrete, self-curing concrete, and strengthening of concrete structures with and the structural dynamics. So at present, he is working as a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering from Sri Chaitanya College of Engineering. So it's my immense pleasure to uh, hand over the session to Dr. M. Sriram Chengaru and I request Sri Ram Chengaru to please continue the session one. Thank you, Abhinay. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Yes, sir. I stop my sharing my screen. You can share this screen. Good evening, students, in house students, as well as uh, outside students, as well as many uh, some research scholars are there, as well as uh, faculty are also available here. A warm welcome to one and all of this lecture series. Yeah, today's session, I'm going to start uh, with the hydration of cement. Yes, we have studied in our concrete technology. You can take it as I'm um, just brushing your knowledge. You might have studied in your graduate level as well as postgraduate level. Once again, I'm taking your time only to just revise the topics so that further whatever the topics that we are going to talk in the day two lectures, then it will give you a brief idea about it. We all know that cement is the second largest material that is being consumed after water. And we should know how it is behaving when it is in contact with water. So uh, for this, we started to understand about cement from the history onwards. So just I'm saying that why we are going to use, why we are using this material rather than any other materials. Why? Because when you are preparing any structure with the help of concrete, it can be molded to the desired shapes and it is having the required properties, whatever the requirement for the structure that is needed. And this cement, is, this concrete is being produced with the help of locally available materials and cement is acting as a binder. We know that the constituent materials of concrete are cement, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, and water. So these four are the basic constituent materials. And the aggregates are the one which are contributing strength to the concrete where cement is binding the aggregate particles. Now just let us see concrete at a glance. The Portland cement is obtained by burning clay and limestone. So we say that cement is produced with the help of calcareous, argillaceous and siliceous materials at high temperature to make it reactive so that we can produce cement. And the aggregates can be crushed from the granite stones or rocks or river gravels. So excuse me sir, sorry for the interruption, I've been here. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I think, uh, yes, now the slide was changed. Before the slide was not changed, sir. That's the reason I go. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yes. So we call it as hydration when the Portland cement is reacting with water and it is a combination and interaction with the four major compounds in the Portland cement. The reaction is fostered in the beginning and slow down later, but it never be completed. We will see here the basic vocabulary before going to further. The concrete, we call it as cement port Portland cement, water, sand, and aggregate, coarse aggregate. When we call it as water, 
Portland cement plus water and sand that call it as mortar and cement paste is Portland cement plus water. That's it. So we already know coarse aggregate when the aggregate size is greater than 4.75 mm. This is called as coarse aggregate and when the fine aggregates are called as less than 4.75 mm. Now I have already talked with this aggregates are occupying about 70 to 75 percent of its volume. We can also add admixes but I'm not going to talk about these admixes at this present time. In the coming days of lectures, we can discuss regarding these lectures, these admixes. Now coming to basic consider the binder cement, this material is used as adhesive or binding material. And here I am going to talk regarding ordinary Portland cement. The ordinary Portland is a place from where the name has occurred. And let us see how this ordinary Portland cement is produced. This ordinary Portland cement is obtained by intimate mixing of mainly calcareous material that is limestone or chalk, or gelicious material that is clay or shale, Siliceous material that is silica. So burning these materials at high temperatures, we know that there is wet process is there, dry process is there. So for the sustainability purpose, we have to go with the dry process. So by burning this at high temperatures, that is 1400 to 1450 degrees centigrade, and we will produce clinkers. And these clinkers are finely grounded to get ordinary Portland cement. So basic history I am showing here. The Romans were the ones who produced this hydraulic cement about 3000 years ago. The cement was made from lime and some volcanic ash near the city of Pozzoli. The ash has some alumina and silica that reacts with lime and form a mixture. So you know we are calling it as Pozzolona. So, pozzolona is nothing but a cementitious material which acts as a cementitious material in presence of cement. So, the, here I am just showing a picture. The dome of Panther is made up of concrete. Sir, actually your slides was not uh, moving forward, sir. Is it for everyone, Abhinay? Yes, sir. can any one of you respond, please? Uh, as, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. 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 Can you please check your slide show, sir? Can you please check your voice also? It was becoming a much echo. Okay, okay. Let me check. Slide show button. Yes, sir. Yes. I did it slide show only, but I don't know the problem. But it is not showing in a slide show, sir. Just wait. Yeah, at least it is better. Why? Right? Because uh, I I don't know the problem. I will check it later. Is the slides visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. You can continue. Okay. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. We know that Joseph Asperin was the one who produced, uh, who patented in Portland cement. He burned clay and limestone together in high temperatures until they react with each other to form a new product. So this product was finally grounded to become Portland cement. The name Portland cement came from the color of the hardened product, which is similar to the stone near Portland. So a Portland is a place where the, the ultimate product that is obtained after burning is similar to the color of the stone that is available near Portland. That's why the name has occurred as Portland cement. Now, I'm not taking much of my time regarding this manufacturing. We, are, we have already studied all this procedure in our concrete technology, but let me briefly explain to you this procedure. We are taking these raw materials 
in a rotary kiln and initially we call it as a, these raw materials are give, given a temperature they are preheated then after that at a temperature of 650 to 950 degrees centigrade i can show it in a figure so initial stage is drying of these raw materials then afterwards preheating at preheating there is a decomposition of clay minerals and after that the calcination starts a cal at calcination the calcium carbonate it will be divided into calcium hydrox calcium oxide and carbon dioxide now at a temperature of 1250 degrees centigrade to 1500 degrees centigrade there is a burning or clinkering is started where combustion of oxide takes place and producing calcium silicates calcium aluminates and calcium aluminoferrates that we call them as box compounds so at a particular temperature the production of these box compounds will take place and this is a picture of the cement manufacturing plant we can see this in our uh, google and the size of these clinkers are ranging from 3 mm to 20 mm and at this stage when you observe these clinkers and when these clinkers are fine powdered when they are in contact with water the initial setting time is zero and we know that there will be stages of concreting will be there where at the stages of concreting is nothing but first of all weighing then mixing so at the time of mixing as well as transporting placing and the vibration that is compaction curing at all these stages before hardening you require certain setting time so that's why to delay the setting time we are adding calcium sulfate this calcium sulfate is nothing but gypsum which is added in the range of three to five percent to delay the setting time now if you observe the box compounds present in the cement tricalcium silicate dicalcium silicate tricalcium aluminate tetracalcium aluminate in simple words we call them as alite, belite, salite, and phalite. And the chemical formulas are presented here. We know uh, there are different types of cements that are available. If you see, OPC is available in three grades. In the olden days, now it is available in two grades. OPC 43, OPC 53 grades. So when you observe this, there is a change in the percentage of these box compounds to produce different types of cements. Now, this is the reaction that is happening inside the kiln at a temperature of 1250 degrees centigrade temperature. Calcium, the dicalcium silicate is produced, and at high temperatures, tricalcium silicate is produced. So, this is the another picture tutorial representation of the box compounds that are presented. I will show them in a tabular tab tab form here. You can observe here the chemical composition that is available. Please once check, I am trying with this slideshow. Are they visible? Yes, yes, sir. It's visible. You can yes, sir. yes. Thank you. Now the chemical composition here, I'm showing the oxide compositions. Calcium oxide is in the percentages of 60 to 67. So this is typically the oxide compositions present in ordinary pork and cement. So it is silica SiO2, 70 to 25%, aluminum A2O3, 3 to 8%, Fe2O3, 0.5 to 6%, then magnesium oxide, 0.1 to 4%, alkalis are there. SO3 is 1.3 to 3. Now, whereas coming to the compound composition, the compounds are nothing but box compounds. When these box compounds are there, this tricalcium silicate is about 50 to 70 percent. Tricalcium silicate is 15 to 30. Please, Abhinay, let me check whether the, my slide is moving or not. No, sir. It's no, it's not. It's in, uh, no, sir. in chemical composition only, sir. It's yeah. Just that's why I'm running with the normal slide only. Maybe I will check it later. For yes, the next yes. presentation, I can check it. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, Chandrasekhar, it is not opening, Chandrasekhar.
ओके सर ओके थैंक यू now just uh, see this uh, schematic presentation of these various compounds in clicker you can observe it is a optical microscope under optical microscope we can understand here the color representation of these box compounds the darker color c3s is available c3s is available c3a as well as c4a they are presented here now what is meant by hydration here when these cement particles when they are in contact with water and they will they will take a chemical and physical reactions between this water and cement and that is called as hydration the chemical reactions how uh, we will describe these chemical reactions so what happens is when water is in contact with the cement particles the box compounds present in the cement particles start reacting and we know that the cement hydration is exothermic reaction we know that there are two types of reaction that are there one is to get reacted we have to supply the energy that is called as endothermic reaction whereas in the other case you require that is when these two materials are getting reacted the energy will be liberated so the liberation of energy we call it as exothermic reaction at initial stage what happens is at initial stages here the cement particles the present box compounds present in the cement particles they start reacting the first stage we call them as pre induction period so there is a rapid dissolution of ionic species this calcium tricalcium aluminate it starts reacting and it produces early setting that we call it as flash set within first 5 minutes high heat will be liberated and that we call it as flash set then what happens is slowly it rapid it reduces and another stage will be there and that stage we call it as dormant period this is for a few hours so this dormant period is the one where the concrete is in plastic state so we will see what is the reaction that is taking place by this box compounds with water we will discuss that one but just understand this typical diagram that is on the x axis it is depicting the time on y axis we are depicting the rate of heat that is liberated initial stage that is called as pre induction period the second stage is dormant period and at the uh, after dormant period initial setting of the cement starts and afterwards certain stage after initial setting the c3s so initially c3a is reacting and it is producing high heat and latter stages there is a dormant period and you can observe there is a slight increase in the peak that is due to the reaction of c3s tricalcium silicate reacts and it produces heat then after final setting time is occur occur then there is a strength gain but however there is a steady state reaction takes place and we can observe that there are majorly four stages in this cement hydration one is pre induction period induction period or dormant period that is for first few hours then acceleration stage which will be happening between 3 to 12 hours where the nucleation that is starting of the cas gel will take place and nucleation of the cas it starts then slowly c2s particles they will also start hydrating and the latter one is post acceleration period so these stages are shown in a representation in a uh, graphical representation now just understand here the hydration of c3s so when this hydration of c3s it is taking reaction with the water molecule to produce csh gel as well as calcium hydroxide so calcium silicate hydride gel which is in the form of pure crystalline and calcium hydroxide in the shape of hexagonal shape 
So you can understand here, delta H is nothing but minus is nothing but liberation of heat around 1114 kilojoule or more will be liberated. Energy will be liberated. Whereas just see the reaction in case of uh, hydration of C2S. When the C2S is reacting with water molecule, it is producing calcium silicate hydrate gel, which is as same as that of uh, calcium, that is the reaction, previous reaction and it is producing calcium hydroxide. Now, the heat liberated is, you can understand, C2S is liberating less amount of heat compared to C3S. And another box compounds that are also there, C3A, if gypsum is not there, and it will produce calcium aluminate hydrates. But in presence of gypsum, it will produce calcium sulfoaluminate hydrates. You can just understand here. We are adding gypsum to delay the setting time. And this tricalcium aluminate in reaction with gypsum, it will, in, in presence of water, it will form a tringite. So that tringites are called as needle type structures. Needle type structures. So you can say that flash setting in cement will take place initially. And to disturb that one, if you once again slowly vibrate it, then that flask will be disturbed. But this ethylene is unstable product. Once again, it will be converted to the monosulfate form. So monosulfate form is the stable product. But the formation of higher amounts of this ethylene or monosulfate, they are the and they will give adverse efforts to concrete. They will give adverse efforts to concrete. Now, just uh, these are the reactions that are showing. We have already seen in our basic uh, uh, concrete technology level. You can see here the hydration products, how they are there. The hydration products of cement are, uh, cement are nothing but majorly three hydration products are there. Calcium silicate hydrate gel, calcium hydroxide and ettringite. So basically three hydration products that we can see. So here the same representation that is shown. So if you understand the relative heat of, of uh, this is typical hydration products, as per the time it is shown, early hydration products are CSH and ettringite. Ettringite converts to monosulfate when all gypsum was used. Then later on, large amount of calcium hydroxide is formed. This is a strong base, so it causes the hydrated cement paste to be highly alkaline with a pH of around 12.5 to 13. So the hydration, three hydration products that are being produced, one is CSH, which is the strength contributing to the cement. Calcium hydroxide, yes, this calcium hydroxide, it is acting as uh, the production of this calcium hydroxide in cement it gives alkalinity to cement concrete so the ph is around 12.5 to 13 it is maintained so if the higher the alkalinity then the resistance for corrosion is very high but however higher amount of calcium hydroxide it will reduce the durability of the concrete that we will see later on so when you observe the strength contribution, there are four box compounds that are available. But these four box compounds, the picture might not be clarified, like the clarity is not there. But however, you can see the top picture is the compressive strength that is being produced by C3S, that is tricalcium silicate. The second one is dicalcium silicate C2S, then C3A as well as C4AF. So we can understand in the four box compounds that are available, the major strength contributing products are C3S as well as C2S. Whereas C3S gives early high strength compared to C2S. C2S is giving later gaining strength. You can see the curves. At early ages, C3S is contributing higher early age strength compared to C2S. Now, uh, this representation, once again, I am showing here with respect to 
the age the yellow color whatever that is shown to you these are unhydrated cement particles and the blue color is representation of water so as the age is progressed then what happens is from outer to inner there is a hydration taking place the high outer unhydrated particles they are reacting with water and they are producing calcium silicate hydrate gel so this calcium silicate hydrate gel it progresses and whatever the voids that are left over these voids will be filled these voids will be filled so you can understand as the age is progressed there is a reduction in the voids and the csa gel formation is increased so just here the slide represents here if you compare 100 parts of tricalcium silicate with 24 parts of water molecule it is producing 75 parts of csa gel 49 parts of calcium hydroxide whereas csa the c2s 100 parts it is producing 99 uh, parts of calcium silicate hydrate gel and 22 parts of calcium hydroxide and the heat liberated is also very less so when you want to produce early there is rapid strength concrete then you have to use c3s based cements whereas you want to produce low heat cements then definitely we have to go for the percentage of c2s should be more so that's why and if you compare tricalcium silicate as well as dicalcium silicate Though dicalcium silicate is producing lateral gaining strength, the CSA gel quality is high and the calcium hydroxide content is low. That is a main important point that we have observed. So this is just to represent the unreacted cement particles. When they are reacting, then there is a formation of CSA gel as well as uh, calcium hydroxide, the hydration products are being formed with respect to age. At initial one day, it is observed 30% reaction has occurred, whereas at 28 days, 70% particles got hydrated. So this is one of the representation. I'm not taking much time here, just see here. If you see the microstructure of the cement hydrated paste, we know that when you produce concrete, there are three phases that are available. One is aggregate phase, cement based phase, interfacial transition zone. So if you observe the hydrated cement based microstructure, the brown color particles, they are representation of unhydrated cement particles. And surrounding these unhydrated cement particles, the CSA gel is observed. And and in between, we can observe the formation of Portland red, that is calcium hydroxide, ettringite needles, as well as capillary pores. The white color is representation of the capillary pores. Now, just a representation. I, I will go here to the diagrammatic representation of the hydration process and formation of the cement gel. So here, as the cement hydration is progressed, there is a reduction in the porosity, the voids are minimized, the cavities are minimized, and the CSA gel part is occupying. So you can understand the CSH, calcium silicate hydrate gel, it occupies, it is a gel type structure, it increases its volume, and it will fill the voids present in the pores. So if you see the microstructure of the concrete, at macro level, if you understand, you can see that only aggregate phase is there, cement based phase is there. But at micro level, concrete is highly heterogeneous. It is highly heterogeneous. And it is having three phases. One is aggregate phase, hydrated cement phase, interfacial transition channel. So to observe this at micro level, we have to take the help of equipment, some techniques we have to take. There are different techniques that are available. Optical microscope, scanning electron microscope with the help of X-ray microscopic analysis, X-ray diffraction, infrared spectroscopy, 
differential thermal analysis, thermogravimetric analysis, nuclear magnetic response, that is NMR spectroscopy. There are other techniques that are available to understand the microstructure of concrete. I have just shown you a few equipment that are available. Now, here the hydration products, we have seen there are three that are available. Just we will see here, what is the shape of this CSH gel? CSH gel is poorly crystalline to crystalline. So the CSH can actually vary from the common fibrous type to irregular grains forming a reticular network. So this picture, whatever I am showing, it is covering the three phases, aggregate, interfacial transition zone, as well as bulk cement paste. You just the highlighted red color, you can observe these are nothing but fibrous reticular network structure of CSH. And in the zone of interfacial transition zone, the formation of CSH is less due to the more amount of water content. But in case of hydrated cement paste, the more amount of dense CSHL formation is observed. In case of uh, this ettringite and calcium hydroxide, you can observe more amount of calcium hydroxide as well as ettringites are formed. So that is the reason at uh, low strength concretes, the crack path is through the interfacial transition zone. And how to improve the interfacial transition zone that we will see in the further lectures. So here we have seen that calcium hydroxide, it looks like a platy crystal type structures. And these uh, platy crystals often tens of microns across with distinct hexagonal prism morphology. So you can see here the shape of the calcium hydroxide. In general, in the hydration products, the calcium hydroxide, it can also be called as Portlandite. It makes up of 20 to 25 percent of the total hydrates. If they are in the optimum quantity, they will increase the alkalinity of this cement concrete. But excess amount of this calcium hydroxide in presence of carbon dioxide, it forms calcium carbonate, which is called as leaching. That is, that we have to take care of that one also. Excess amount of calcium hydroxide is also giving adverse efforts to cement concrete. And here I'm showing you the representation of ettringites, calcium sulfoaluminate hydrates. And these ettringites, we call them as tri-calcium sulfoaluminate hydrates, which is unstable product. And these ettringites are occupying more space and at the early ages they will form like a needle type structures and they will fill the voids like they will occupy more volume thus they will decrease the durability of the concrete so here i am showing you the observation microstructural observation of different types of concretes which we have done research in our uh, doctoral level. Natural aggregate, when you are observing at optical microscope, the voids present in the cement hydrated paste, we can observe for the recycled aggregate as well as natural aggregate. And the below picture, just I'm explaining you here, when they are these natural aggregate, when they reacted with acids, when they uh, got contaminated and there is a leaching of calcium ions and here recycling aggregate got more leaching of calcium ions without and with acid attack i am just showing you the optical microscopic images but this optical microscope you can observe only the size of the void to observe the hydration quantity quantification then we have to take the help of scanning electron microscope this scanning electron microscope is basically upon a principle of principle uh, the primary electron strikes a solid body so when an object these electrons are striking an object some of the electrons they will be absorbed some will be reflected diffracted, and these reflected will be captured 
these reflected will be considered into two categories one is secondary electrons another one is back scattered electrons so with the help of these secondary electrons as well as back scattered electrons we can understand what is the shape size texture as well as with the contraction you can identify the hydrogen products so this is the equipment that is showing you regarding the scanning electron microscope so a secondary electron image if you understand it is a low electron low energy electrons these are used to identify or to examine the particle shape size surface texture and the crystal morphology so when there is a fibrous reticular network so you can understand these are the particles of csh gel whereas needles are available these needles are entering guides and the hexagonal shapes are available these are the representation of calcium hydroxide so from the shape and texture we are identifying the hydration products with our naked eye we are unable to see with the help of microstructure with the help of uh, uh, these microscopic techniques we are observing this whereas back scattered electron images are basically with the contrast color contrast with the brightness of the image you can identify here see the unreacted alite which is nothing but anhydrous and anhydrous cement particles they will be the brightest one and the darkest one is the void so you can see here from the peak unreacted cement particle is there surrounding this unreacted cement particles there is inner product of calcium silicate hydrate gel is there and the next one is here you can see the order anhydrous anhydrous cement particle is the brightest one followed by calcium hydroxide calcium silicate hydrate aggregates and voids they will appear dark and along with the shape and size to quantify elemental composition can be done with the help of energy dispersive x-ray analyzer and here to identify these hydrated cement particles there are certain limitations are there according to the ratio of ca by si with that ratio we can identify calcium silicate hydrates calcium hydroxides and monosulfates so we will discuss all these things in our future classes just i am giving you a overview on the microscopic techniques that's it so here how the sample is prepared that we will discuss in the future classes another technique that is available is x ray diffraction analysis so one is scanning electron microscopy another one is x ray diffraction analysis in our physics we have studied bragg's equation so with the help of this bragg's equation n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta there is a path difference between the ray 1 and ray 2 that will give a path difference of 2d sin theta so here from the diffraction angle we are getting the we are identifying the mineral identification elemental composition is identified with the help of scanning electron microscopes mineral composition will be done with the help of or phase identification will be done with the help of x ray diffraction so this is how the identification of minerals is done quartz is nothing but the chemical formula is sio2 there is portlandite hartrite so i said tricalcium silicate the tricalcium silicate mineral name is hartrite dicalcium mineral name is larnite and tricalcium aluminate that is nothing but tricalcium aluminate silicate gismondine calcium aluminate ferrite brown mineralite and ettringite calcium aluminate sulfur hydrates so different minerals will be identified at a particular phase angle at a particular d spacing so this is at the level of research study where we will identify the sem and xrd particles at of cement particles here i am showing you in general if you observe the cement particles they look like spherical but at micro level they are in the tetrahedron shape and when we have taken a cement particle sample under sem and xrd we identified that this is the elemental composition observed by 
our study and we observed that cement is containing a light, the light, aluminate and ferrite phases. Whereas I am showing you for the fly ash particle, where fly ash is a mineral admixture, you can observe the image of fly ash particles, they are spherical in shape. And if you observe what is the chemical composition of this fly ash is, it is basically having mullite quartz and a small traces of dolomite is available. So you can observe silica is there. So our next speakers, they will discuss regarding these different types of fly ash that are available, like class C fly ash, class F fly ash, that we will see later on. And let me just briefly give you the images, seven images after 28 days, how they look like. Dense packing of the structure you can observe. And this is the XRD shape. So now, in this lecture series, what we are going to see is beyond this concrete technology, whatever the research work that is done by our researchers, they will give you the need for the study as well as why we have taken this particular study and where this study can be applied. So that at present scenario, considering the sustainability construction, we need to understand this ordinary Portland cement usage is rapidly reduced. Nowadays, we are not using this OPC. Now we have seen different types of cements that are available. So why these different types of cements, they came forward, that we will try to understand. I am closing my session now. I am handing my session to the next speaker, B. Ram Mohan, and he will explain types of cement and what are the tests that are to be conducted on cement. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you very much. It's, it is an, a very informative session. And uh, uh, participants, uh, if you are having any questionnaires, uh, please, uh, you have uh, five minutes of time. You can uh, ask the speaker so that he will answer your questions. Yes, either you can unmute, unmute yourself or you can uh, post your question in the chat box so that the uh, speaker will address you. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, sir. Myself, Madhu. Yeah, Madhu, yeah. Sir, in, in uh, slide number 23. Yes. So, actually, the graph is uh, starting from zero, sir. Thank you. Slide number 23. Yes, sir. In this, the graph is starting from zero. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like you can see here, initially, when the cement is reacting, there is no reaction taking place. Yes, sir. So you can say here, you can join them. Yes, sir. It, it is actually joining from the origin. Sir. Yes, yes. Actually, we, we won't draw from the origin. We won't join from so the before, origin. Before reaction, yes, is, before time is not taking, you need to say that there is no reaction. Yes, sir. We, we uh, Without adding the water, we can't do anything. Hydration process, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So that is uh, the graph, it is to be added from the origin only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir uh, one more doubt, sir. Yes. Uh, so like, uh, uh, is the, uh, when, will, when we will achieve 100% of hydration, sir, is it possible, sir? 100% uh, hydration after 365 days of curing also from the researchers, it is said that 95% of hydration is only Achievable. The reason is if you maintain the proper water cement ratio inside the cement particles, we know that there are three categories are there. Like one is bound water, another one is gel water, third one is capillary water. So when you observe the bound water, the bound water content is 0.23. To get completely hydrated under saturated surface spray condition of the aggregates, you can achieve hydration like 100% hydration but what happens is there is uh, evaporation of water that is added at the mixing time whatever the water that is added it may be evaporated so at the time of evaporation the cement particles they don't have sufficient amount of water content to get hydrated so that's why 
that is the reason and some of you the misconception is whatever the water that is added during the curing time when you cure the concrete the water the curing water that will not at all react with the cement particles it will only maintain the optimum temperature like uh, to progress the uh, hydration that's it uh, okay sir sir uh, last one more doubt sir yeah yeah up to uh, so as the hydration is increases the strength of the uh, concrete is increase uh, increases na no, sir yes. like so but uh, at a certain time the strength is decreasing so what is the reason that sir so here uh, the reason is uh, is there any effect on the durability point of view that we have to observe so under laboratory conditions it is observed that there is no reduction in the strength but under field conditions as we know that in the laboratory if you observe you are maintaining the optimum environmental conditions but that environmental conditions do they maintain on site no and, yeah, you mean to ask madhudaru you mean to ask about the environmental like laboratory research or outside uh, the study like on field on field study sir actually after uh, construction of the uh... like structure 50 years or 100 years the structure gets loses its strength na sir yes so you mean uh, yes uh, madhudaru definitely we will answer this question at this point of time if i discuss regarding the durability of concrete it takes lot of time But okay sir thank you there there are some factors which affect the durability of concrete that will be explained by the next speakers and once again at the end of our lecture series if that is not answered i will definitely answer that one thank you sir yeah thank you if any questions are there uh, abhinay we will discuss uh, at the end of the second session yes. the speaker is ready yes yes sir thank you thank you very much sir and uh...